inline No, inline doesn't matter. Inline would be what? In the line of traffic. This is only for promiscuous. Fast Ethernet, zero slash 14, switchboard host, switchboard access, VLAN 100. This is the management port of IPS. Okay? Uh, I'll also create a VLAN 199, set it up as remote span. Monitor session one, source VLAN 10, comma 199. Monitor session one, destination interface 0 slash 15, which is the first port of the IPS. Switch two, I want to do remote span. Monitor session one, source VLAN 10. Monitor session one, destination remote VLAN 199. So I'll copy anything from VLAN 10 from this switch and send it over there. Good. Now let's take a look at the IPS. We'll run setup. 192.168.100.115. Because I have 15 already. 15 is my switch. Comma 192.168.100.1. Yes, 192.168.100.0 slash 24, allow them to access, the rest is all okay. Save, done. Now I can manage it from where? HTTPS colon. stuff now. This is your regular. I'm not going to spend time over here. I hope you know this. Enable G00. That's port 15. Go to my policies. Edit. Apply G00. So I'm now in promiscuous mode. Good. Clear. Now the next thing is I'll go to a signature and do a block on it, just for the heck of it. We'll do the ping. Enable, set the severity level to medium, edit action, request block. This is for VLAN. 10. So to generate this alert or this block, I need to send a ping into VLAN. Now the block will happen. There's no device in the middle. There's no router. I wanted to do the block on the WLC. So how does it work on the WLC? So the first thing that I did was did the block. I want to see if the Shunlitz shows up, host blocks. There's 10.2 that is shunned now. It's on the shun list or the block list. Now what I want to do is I want to integrate this with the WLC. So the WLC should see the shun list and if any wireless client has done it, he should be blocked on the WLC. How do I do that? On the WLC, I'll go under security, advanced, sensor. Add my sensor. Now what did I tell you over here? The sensor doesn't log into the device, the device logs into the sensor. Now you have two options. You can either use the same normal username that I'm using, Cisco is square one, two, three to log in, 
or you can create, create your own account if you want. All right, I'll just use the same one. The IP address is 100 115, username, Cisco, Cisco at 123. Now, the thing over here that is critical over here is the fingerprint. It's now something that you need to be care very careful about. If I go to my IPS to check this fingerprint, my IDM, the place that I can check that configuration Think sensor management yeah certificates under certificates is that SS, uh, the SHA key if you take a look at it over here the server service certificate see it's not showing the whole thing and this is a browser issue this is a browser issue. Not only that, the problem with this is that you need to type it in because you need to type the entire thing where? Over here. So a better way, an easier way of doing it, this is where I can use the command line for the IPS. Show TLS fingerprint. What does that do? It shows you that fingerprint. And not only that, you can copy it. One thing that you need to be very careful about, this enabled is not enabled by default. So you need to make sure of that. Change this to 15 seconds. So it needs to log in. Success, so it has logged in successfully into what? IPS. And eventually you'll get it. Take some time sometimes. But as long as your success is there, it will eventually get the shun list from here. So the main thing is you need to check, make sure that success is there. And give it some time, it will pull the, what shun list will it pull down? should have 10 to as a source. I'll give it some time and it should pop up. And out. Good, good. That is integrating your WLC with